Welcome students to grade 9 Uni 6 Ecology. Today we are diving into an exciting part of biology that explores how living things interact with each other and their surroundings. From teeny bacteria in the soil to massive whales in the ocean, everything is connected in the web of life. Let's explore how this interaction shape uh, ecosystems affect survival and maintain the balance of nature. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define important ecological terms like ecosystem, population, and community. Uh, identify and explain the roles of biotic or living and abiotic or non-living factors. Uh, understand how life is organized in nature from uh, a single organism to the entire biosphere. Describe different types of ecological relationships and why they matter. Keep these goals in mind as we move through each topic. What is ecology? Let's start with a definition. Ecology is the branch of biology that studies the interactions between organisms and uh, their environment. The, the scientists who study these relationships are called ecologists. An ecosystem is made up of all biotic or living and abiotic or non-living components in a particular area. Understanding ecology helps us answer questions like why do zebras live in herders? What happens when a forest is cut down? How does pollution affect fish? It shows us how everything in nature is linked. Biotic and abiotic components. Ecosystems are shaped by two types of components. Biotic factors, these are the living parts. Example includes, examples include uh, predators like lions, prey like antelopes, decomposers like fungi and bacteria, competitors, uh, competitors like organisms that fight for the same resource. Whereas abiotic factors, th these are the non-living parts that influence the living things. Example, sunlight, temperature, water, nutrients. For example, sunlight or energy, most, ecos most ecosystems rely on the sun as the primary energy source. Temperature affects how fast organisms grow or metabolize food, water, all life needs it. Nutrients, uh, elements like nitrogen and phosphorus are vital for growth. Both of these components work uh, together to shape the environment and determine which organisms can survive there. Abiotic factors in detail. Let's take a closer look at the abiotic factors. Light, plants need uh, light for photosynth photosynthesis. More light usually means more plant growth. Uh, temperature, uh, every organism has a temperature range in which it survives best, too hot or too cold, and life becomes difficult. Uh, water, uh, it, makes, uh, it makes up a large part of most organisms and helps regulate body temperature and the chemical reactions. Nutrients, these are like the food for plants. If the soil lacks nutrients, uh, plants struggle to grow, even with water and sunlight. And uh, these factors differ in every environment, which is why we see different organisms uh, in desert, um, in forests or oceans. Ecological levels. In ecology, we study life at different levels of organization. There are uh, levels like organism, population, community, ecosystem, biosphere. For example, organism is a single individual like one zebra, whereas population, a group of the same species uh, living in the same area, like a herd of zebras. Uh, the third one, community. Community is all the different species living, dif uh, living together like uh, zebras, lions, and the tree, tree, trees in, in the savanna. The other one, ecosystem. 
a community plus the abiotic environment is called ecosystem, like soil, air, water, etc. The other one is biosphere, which is the entire planet and all life on it, and that includes all ecosystems combined. Each level is important in understanding how nature works, starting small and building up to the big picture. Populations and communities. Let's zoom in uh, on populations and uh, communities. A population is a group of individuals of the same species that live uh, and reproduce in a specific area. Example, all zebras in, uh, in a savanna make up a zebra population, whereas a community includes all the living species in that area. Example, a, a coral reef community includes fish, corals, seaweed, and uh, crustaceans. Understanding this uh, helps us measure biodiversity and track how species interact or affect one another. Ecosystems. An, uh, an ecosystem is a combination of the living or biotic and non-living or abiotic things in a, specific, in, a, in a specific environment. Examples of ecosystems include forests, deserts, oceans, lakes. Ecosystems are self-sustaining, meaning they recycle energy and nutrients. Plants absorb sunlight, Animals eat plants, decomposers break down waste, creating a loop that keeps life uh, going. When, when one part of the system is dis, uh, disturbed, like pollution or species loss, uh, it can affect the entire ecosystem. Types of uh, ecosystems. Ecosystems can be divided into major types. These are terrestrial, terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem found uh, on land, uh, for example, forests, grasslands, deserts, uh, tundra. These are terrestrial ecosystems. Whereas aquatic ecosystems are found in water, for example, like we have fresh water and marine. Fresh water, for example, lakes, rivers, whereas marine. Uh, Oceans, coral reefs are some eco uh, aquatic ecosystems. So each of these ecosystems supports unique species that are adapted to the environment. Uh, a cactus thrives in the deserts, while a clone fish thrives in coral uh, reefs. Biomes. Now let's talk about biomes. A biome is a large region of the Earth defined by its climate, soil, and uh, dominant plant life. Common biomes include tropical rainforest, desert, and uh, uh, grassland. Tropical rainforest uh, is hot and wet uh, with lots of biodiversity, whereas desert very dry with extreme temperature. Uh, the grassland biome is large open areas with grasses and uh, with grasses and uh, grass, uh, grazing animals. Uh, biomes help us understand how climate uh, shapes ecosystem. For example, animals in 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 cold tundra grow thick fur, while uh, desert animals are active at night to avoid heat. Ecological relationships. In every ecosystem, organisms interact in different ways. These are called ecological relationships. For example, we have competition. When two species fight for the same resource like food or shelter. Predation. When one organism or the predator eats another or the prey, this is called predation. Predation. Uh, herbivory, animals eat plants and this can affect plant populations. Parasitism, uh, one benefits while harming the other. Example, ticks on a dog. Uh, next to that, we have mutualism. Uh, both the species benefit. Example, bees pollinating flowers. So the bees, the bees and the flowers both are benefited. In this relationship. The other one is commensalism. 
commensalism one benefit is and the other is neither helped nor harmed example uh, uh, barnacles on a web these are this shows a commensalism relationship these relationships are key for balance in nature and uh, affect population sizes and ecosystems uh, ecosystem health ecological succession ecological succession is the process of gradual change in ecosystem over time there are two types primary succession and secondary succession primary succession happens in places with no life or soil like uh, after a volcanic eruption and it starts with pioneer species like lichens that can survive harsh conditions and build soil the second one is secondary succession which happens when where life used to be uh, but was distributed like after a fire or flood soil is already there so plants regrow faster succession shows how ecosystems recover adapt and eventually reach a stable state again let's review what we have learned ecology is the study of how organisms interact with each other and their environment biotic and abiotic factors work together to shape ecosystem uh, and also life is organized in levels from organism to population population to community community to ecosystem ecosystem to biosphere ecosystem can be uh, terrestrial or aquatic and uh, large ecosystems are called uh, biomes organisms interact through competition predation parasitism and other relationships uh, ecological successions shows how ecosystems grow change and recover everything in nature is connected and by understanding these connections we can help uh, protect our environment let's reflect how do you think human activity activities like deforestation pollution or overfishing affect ecosystems what actions can we take to restore or protect natural ecos ecosystems discuss with a partner or share your thoughts with the class uh, ecology teaches us that even small actions like planting a tree or recycling can have a big impact.